Hi, I'm Larry Troca, and today we're going to do a, a video on horses that spook and how to deal with it. You know, spooking is a common problem. Um, most people have, have had to deal with it at one time or another. So today I want to talk about why horses spook, how to prevent it, or at least to minimize it. And the third thing I want to talk about is how to get control of your horse and, you know, save yourself from the possibility of getting hurt. Okay, and spooking is something I've had a lot of experience with because, you know, when I was a, a little kid, uh, seven years old, I got my first horse. Uh, my parents got him for me, and this was a spooking son of a gun now. Uh, his name was Lucky, and <laughs> Lucky only cost $75, uh, and that included the saddle. And there was a reason why he was that cheap. Uh, when when uh, the very first time I rode him, I found out real quick that uh, Lucky was a big time spooker. And you know, what he would do is we'd be riding along and all of a sudden his head would go way up high and he'd let out a, a loud snort, you know, out of his nose. And next thing you know, he would wheel around 180 degrees, bog his head and start bucking like a saddle bronc. Well, you know, I'm only seven years old. I mean, what am I going to do uh, other than get bucked off into the ditch alongside the road? And uh, as soon as I was bucked off, well, you know, Lucky was making a beeline back home. And, uh, you know, this went on for months until, you know, I eventually got where I could ride the bucking storm. And, uh, you know, he'd see I was still on. He'd still stampede off, but then what he would do, you know, he'd, he'd see somebody's driveway, run up the driveway, look for a clothesline, and try to go under it and clothesline me right out of the saddle. And this went on for quite a while, and, you know, I never did get him over that. And, and you know, he'd put, you know, let some of my friends ride him, and, you know, he hurt a lot of people. So this is something that is dead serious uh, that we got to get a handle on. Now, let's talk about why horses spook. You know, all horses will spook at one time or another. Uh, it's, their, it's their inborn instinct to spook. You know, when, during, the, during their, their period of evolution, you know, the horses that were real wary and, uh, you know, spooked at anything that looked like it might be a hiding predator, you know, those are the horses that survived. And the ones that, that weren't wary, the ones that didn't spook, were the ones that got, you know, ate by the predators. So, you know, horses have evolved to be real wary of anything that they're not familiar with or anything that looks like a possible predator. Um, and there's two, there's two um, ways that horses spook. You know, something, you know, if you're riding along and all of a sudden something jumps out of the weeds, well, you know what, any horse is going to spook. And you're not going to prevent that. I mean, that's just their inborn instinct. And you just better be a good enough rider to be able to stay on when they jump away from it. You know, they might jump away from it and then just stop and see what it is. Other horses are going to jump away from it, bog their head and buck. Others are going to just take off like a rocket. The other form of spooking is when a horse sees something way off in the distance, like this horse is doing now. He sees something over there, you know, that looks like possible danger. And, you know, if you're going to have one to sp spooking, I mean, that's what you want, something that's going to warn you that the spooking's coming. Now, what needs to be done, you as a rider have to, have to face reality. If you're a poor rider... You know, if, you, if your balance is bad and, and you've got to hang on to the saddle horn to stay on, you're going to have a tough time dealing with horses that spook. What happens to a lot of people is the horse spooks and they get the old death grip on his mouth and, you know, fall off anyway, or they'll clamp onto the horn and go into the fetal position and end up on the horse's neck. Or what's even worse, I've seen some people, the horse starts to spook, they pull for all they're worth to stop him, and they flip the horse over backwards on themselves. I don't know how many, yeah, I've gotten a jillion emails from people saying, what do I do? You know, my horse spooks and flips over backwards. Well, no, he doesn't. He spooks, and you pull him over backwards on you, okay? So you got to be careful that you don't do that. If you're not a good enough rider, 
you need to work on that to become a good rider, okay? There's no, there's no uh, getting away from that, okay? Um, the one way that you can, the only way, really, that you can prevent yourself from getting hurt is to have so much control on your horse that he listens to you more than he does being afraid of whatever is spooking him, okay? And let me put that in other words. Your desire, your hands, your legs need to override whatever it is that he's afraid of, okay? Now, on a horse that's really broke, you know, one that, that, that moves off leg pressure, one that respects what, I, you know, what I'm doing with my hands, yeah, they might still spook, but they're not going to spook and buck me off, and they're not going to spook and take off at a dead run where I can't get them stopped, okay? So, you know, if I'm, if I'm you know, if I got my horse broke, and, and let me show you what I mean by broke. The way, the, the only real control that you have over any horse is the ability to take his head away, okay? When a horse panics, spooks, whatever, the, about the only thing I can do is pull his head around and get control of him, get him stopped, okay? He can't really do much with his head pulled around like that, okay? So if he spooks and I can reach down and hurry up and get his head, I can get control of the situation. Now, a lot of people have seen that technique and they've heard of that technique and have tried that technique when their horse spooks. And what they end up doing is they reach down and pull the rein, the horse stiffens up his neck, rears up or flips over backwards or ignores their hand, sets their neck solid where they can't get their head and take off running, okay? And those people say, well, that doesn't work. Well, yes, it does work, but you've got to prepare your horse for it. Um, you know, you just can't go cold turkey and think you can reach down and get his head on a horse that, that doesn't know how to give his head. So before you ever get yourself in trouble out on the trail, you know, you need to have that horse to where he will lightly give his head to you. When you bump that rein, he needs to give it, okay? The way we teach that is we ask lightly, and if they don't come, we bump it. We get them conditioned to where they'll respond to us. Now, they not only have to give laterally, they also need to give vertically. Because if the horse spooks real quick, you, the only thing you might be able to do is pull straight back, okay? And if he'll give to your hands, at least he'll drop off the bit instead of rearing up with you, okay? So what I'll do is if I'm going to have a horse that I'm going to ride on the trail and the horse has a tendency to spook, I'm going to have this horse conditioned so that I can trot him around and from the trot reach down and pull his head around. Okay, this horse is broke, but even he's kind of struggling against it, you know, with, with forward motion. You need, you know, I want to have him conditioned so that no matter what, when I reach down, I can take that head right away. Good. It's that time he didn't struggle. Now, if I was going to go on a trail ride, I would remind him of this before I went out on the trail ride. Okay, once I've got this, him giving his head to my hands, I'm going to feel a lot more comfortable that I can control my horse. The other thing, watch my left leg here. When I press with my foot, he moves off that leg. If I press, if I turn my toe out and press with this spur, he moves off of it. I want him to have respect for my legs so that so that if he sees something way off in the distance and he starts to spook, I can control his face with my hands and I can control his body with my legs. If I'm riding along and my horse sees a deer way off 
you know, ahead of us, and boy, his head goes up, and he starts getting antsy, and I know something bad's going to happen, first thing I'm going to do is get his mind on me and off whatever it is that he's, that he's spooking at, okay? Which means I'm going to trot circles. If there's room right there, I'm going to go trot in circles. I'm going to pull him around, trot some more circles. I'm going to pull him around some more. Whatever it takes, whatever it takes to get his mind off of whatever it is he's spooking at and get it on me, okay? I can, I, number one, I establish that I'm still in control, and number two, he kind of forgets about it. Now, if I've got control and he starts calming down, I might point him at whatever it is that's spooking him and let him rest while he's, while he's looking at that. Now, the one thing that you're not going to be able to prevent is the sudden spook. You're on the trail, something jumps out of the bushes, you know, a pheasant jumps out of the bushes, scares the bejesus out of your horse. I mean, there really isn't much you can do to prevent that. But once he does spook and take off, first thing you want to do, reach down, take his head. Reach down, take his head. And it's important that when you, when you reach down to take his head, you stay seated on the cheeks of your butt. Most people, when the horse spooks, it scares them too. And when, when the rider's scared, they usually kind of go into the fetal position. You know, their feet come back and they kind of go up on the horse's neck. Well, it's so easy to fall off, you know, in that position. So you need to practice that muscle memory. And, and I tell you what, the more you practice getting control of your horse, the less you have to fear about your horse spooking. Stay on your butt. A lot of people will pull that rein. Your power comes when it, if your horse spooks and you gotta take his head, the power comes from your elbow coming back and your forearm being in line with the horse's mouth. What a lot of folks do is they have their arm straight and they bring it down here and they fall forward as they do this. Well, you really don't have any power that way and you also lose your balance. So the body position is on your butt, reach down to grab the rein, elbow comes back, and your shoulders come back to anchor your butt in that saddle, reach down, take it, elbows come back. He takes off to spook right here, right here. And if he panics, you know, if you take his head and he tries to rip the rein out of your hand and stiffen up, pitch him the slack and take him again. Pitch him the slack, take him again. Sometimes holding the rein steady will invite them to fight you. But if you pull release, pull release, pull release, pull release, you can get control of him. And that works good on a lot of horses, that strong pull release, and it's gotta come one, two, three, okay? All right, now, Let's talk about a couple other things that you can do. Some horses are what I call uh, habitual spookers. They have kind of like a spooking phobia. Now, the only way that I know of to get a horse over a phobia is to make that phobia really, really uncomfortable, okay? So if I've got a horse as a habitual spooker, and I got him broke, he starts spooking. Let's say, let's say the camera, he's, let's say he's spooking at the camera. And we've all had horses that do this. He sees the camera, you're riding around, and, and he knows it's there. He's seen it a jillion times, but he's still spooking from it. Well, they'll turn away to leave. What I'll do is I'll get tough right here, bump, 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 and then face him to it and pitch him the slack and pet him. He spooks the other way, tries to leave, I make this uncomfortable. Boom, 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 boom. I bump him enough so that it bothers him and then brings him back to the camera, make that comfortable, okay? Same thing with your feet. We've all had horses. You know, have you ever been riding in an arena and a horse sees something in the corner of the arena and he just refuses to go over there? Well, if he's not listening to your legs, you need to get him listening to your legs. And if that means using spurs, you use spurs, okay? And you let him know, same thing, if, if, he, if, I try, if the corner of the arena is over there and I'm bumping him with my foot and he won't go that direction because he's afraid to, and he is, 
he's been in the arena a bunch of times. He knows that's not going to get him. I'm going to get I'm going to get aggressive with my spur and my leg, and I'm going to thump him and say, "You get up there." And pretty soon, when you make them listen to you, they finally just go, "Huh, eh, you know this spooking stuff. Yeah, it's just not worth it." And a lot of them will give it up. You know, I've got, I tell you the truth, I've got a horse in training right now, scared to death of one side of the arena. And for the first month, he's a young horse, he's real green, so I really couldn't get after him much. But after I kind of got him broke, you know, I'd, you know, I'd kick his butt. If he wouldn't go that, that, to that side of the arena, I'd get after him and make him go. And after a couple of weeks of that, he finally just went, eh, he's going to make me go, I might as well just give it up, okay? All right, so those are, those are some tips to help you, um, uh, with your horses that spook, uh, again, practice, 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 taking that horse's head away. Uh, practice right before you go on the trail, and hopefully that'll help you stay out of trouble.